Church uh, offices uh, um, for your attendance. Uh, we now come to item 11, which is another um, recommendation from the Regulatory Committee to amend the Water Supply and Wastewater Network bylaw. Uh, I think we have online our offices. Uh, I'll just double check you're there. Mark Bishop from Principal Policy Planner for Watercare. Mark, are you there? Thank you. And Steve Webster, uh, Chief Infrastructure Officer for Watercare. Are you there, Steve? Yes. Okay, so our officers are there, but um, once again, I will ask, um, first of all, Councillor Cooper to move it. Do I have a seconder? I'll look at Tracy Mulholland on this occasion. And uh, if I can therefore ask uh, Councillor Cooper to introduce the item. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And this is different in that we are asking for, uh, to uh, the governing body to approve the proposal to go out to consultation. So this is the step ahead of the last um, bylaw. So we recommend, uh, the recommendations are that the, um, we're actually, this has got the recommendation, the full recommendation, but really this is around adopting a statement of proposal to amend the water supply and wastewater network bylaw for consultation. So this is not about what goes in the pipes, it's about the pipes. It's about the infrastructure and how we protect that to make sure that our infrastructure is um, safe from tampering with and and that it, it is fit for purpose. Um, so it's to deal with anybody um, you know, that might be tampering with it or, or not using it properly. Um, so we actually have been through a bylaw review and options paper and now this is the proposal. So really there's, um, other than that, the other recommendation is to appoint a panel um, so the panel will be uh, myself as chair, a water care representative, and we're recommending Catherine Holland. She isn't on the board anymore, but she has been involved in water care bylaw, uh, bylaws that involve water care with council as well, and she's been very good. And the other is um, independent Murray statutory board member, and I haven't heard from member Taipari, how, I mean, sorry, Chair Taipari, but I spoke to member Wilcox yesterday and he thinks it will be him, but we'll get that confirmed. And the panel will attend the Have Your Say events, deliberate and make recommendations back to the governing body once we've received the public feedback and our wonderful staff have collated it all. So that's all I need to say and there may be questions of our um, staff members who are online. Okay, um, reasonably straightforward once again. Um, I asked if I could see a copy of the bylaw and I was told it was about 80 pages long and then I asked what it effectively did and the summary was reasonably concise. So it, it's not attached, it is relatively straightforward, it is going out to consultation, but we do have the opportunity to ask uh, questions now. And the first question is uh, uh, Councillor Wayne Walker. I've got a, a question, and the question is around the context of our water supply issues, and especially drought and, and the like. And, and that is, um, is there anything in the, um, in the bylaw that enables Auckland Council or Watercare to restrict um, supply? And the context around that is that um, other uh, councils overseas that have that in our present circumstance, if a given um, resident or um, business was wasting voluminous amounts of water, I don't know that we have any controls around that um, as compared to, say, other jurisdictions, and I'm thinking around um, Copenhagen, for example, where there's a requirement that um, people that take water have best practice for their particular industry so that it's not just a carte blanche in terms of um, uh, taking water. Does this bylaw enable us to have any um, control over, this, over those matters that would dovetail in with our water strategy when we have it? Uh, I think that one will probably go to uh, officials. So, uh, Mark or Steve, have you got a comment to make in response to that? I'm not sure whether that's in scope of this paper or outside. Through the chair, Mark Bishop. Thank you, Councillor Walker. Um, yeah, when it comes to actually trying to control the amount of uh, water and so forth, and, and um, the quality used in this bylaw, it's beyond the scope of this bylaw. 
this bylaw gives council the ability to put to impose water restrictions, but it doesn't uh, have any clauses or rules around encouraging or enabling um, uh, you know, sensible water use and so forth. So, so, so what happens if somebody is using huge quantities of water and wasting it? What can we do? Is it is the answer we can't do anything? Uh, yeah, for, with respect to the bylaw, no, we can't do anything. Steve Webster here. Um, what what we do is we we, we monitor and, and and are constantly reviewing the water use of our, our major customers, in fact, all our customers. And if we see significant increases in water use, we we then um, discuss those with our, our commercial customers and work on ways on how they can reduce their water usage. And we do that regularly. That's a, that's business as usual for us. And the other related question, do we have any best practice in place for any um, industries on the Watercare website? Um, look, just before we get into that, I think we're talking about outside of the scope of, of what this bylaw is, uh, Councillor Walker. It's a valid question, but not in this context. Um, so maybe if I can get you to... To, to deal directly with water care on that. Councillor Cooper, you had a comment? Yeah, I was just going to say, in section 12 of this bylaw, there is um, a section that talks about our ability. It says where council considers its ability to maintain adequate supply of drinking water, maybe at risk, drought, emergency, we can apply restrictions, which is what we did last May. And we, then we um, chain, altered it in November, December last year, so we can do that. So basically the only thing you've got there is no person may use water contrary to a restriction made under this clause. So there's an ability when we've got restrictions on to deal with that, but the rest of that is is probably will be really best covered in our water strategy is how do we manage people's use of water, how do we encourage savings, all of those sorts of things. And also, as Watercare say, they work with their large industrial customers including Auckland Council, to um, encourage them to save, give them ways of saving and, and ideas. So really only section 12 of this deals with when we're in restrictions rather than general everyday use. Thank you very much. Uh, any further questions on this bylaw? If not, it's been moved and seconded. Um, the motion is to adopt the statement of proposal. Um, sorry, I've got... A comment. Sorry, I've skipped over comment, but uh, Councillor Newman, I'm, you're, you're fine. Um, so the motion is to adopt the statement of proposal to forward to uh, the IMSB and the local boards the statement uh, to note the makeup of the bylaw panel and to note the delegation of authority. So I'll put that motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. I declare it carried. Um, we come now um, just in time. Uh, for Chair Handley, um, the Waiheke Rahui uh, by Ngāti Poa, uh, and we've got Megan Tyler at the end of the table uh, and Dave Allen. So welcome uh, to that. Um, maybe Councillor Coombe, you'd like to move this. I'd be happy to second it. Um, and if we can ask um, uh, Megan and Dave to, to talk to the paper, please. Thank you, Mr Chair. Kia ora koutou. Uh, just very briefly, this is uh, a paper in support of Ngāti Pāwas. Firstly, they issued a rahui um, around uh, a section of Waiheke um, earlier in the year, and they then subsequently have applied um, through the Ministry of Primary Industries under the Fisheries Act um, for a, um, a specific uh, formal fisheries closure, uh, particularly focusing on uh, crayfish, scallops, power, and mussels. Uh, the details are in the report with, with a map. So this is uh, Council's opportunity. We're not a decision maker in this, but it's our opportunity to support that application. And so this, ap this report does so. The recommendations are to support uh, the application around uh, Waiheke and to uh, delegate authority to the Mayor and Councillor Coombe uh, to write formally to the Minister in support of that I'm happy to answer any questions, uh, Mr Chair. Uh, thank you very much. So um, I have a question first in the name of Councillor Shane Henderson. 
Thanks, uh, Mayor, and reserve my right to speak. Uh, just looking at this report, uh, is there a reason why there isn't a climate impact or Māori impact statement in the report? Uh, yes, that we initially were looking to put this um, as an urgent item on the Environment and Climate Change Committee uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we couldn't quite get the timing right. So um, I made the decision to continue with what was a short report in that respect. So that is why you have this form. There is no other reason for that, but happy to speak to any questions you may have, Councillor. Yeah, um, yeah, thanks for that. that that's good. Um, I was quite interested in those sections with this report, but in particular, I kind of want to get a, a sense of the lay of the land, and uh, apologies for the seemingly basic question, but what are the iwi are involved here? So on um, page 55 of your agenda, you've got a uh, leaflet, I guess you want to call it, um, from or an, a media statement really from Ngāti Pawa, um, as they that was in relation to the Arahui. They've certainly there are other um, there are that iwi and there are other hapu involved. Um, we are not making a comment about whether there are any other uh, iwi that should have been involved in that Rahui or anything like that. And they have uh, put this application to fisheries. We are supporting that application, but not making uh, any comment about others who may also wish to have an involvement in that process. Thank you very much. Councillor Al Filipina. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Look, I just wanted to find out after their two years um, that they've suggested in the report, and that's Ngāti Paua, after the two years, what happens then if the report comes out and saying, look, we still haven't replenished um, our kai moana. Um, what happens then? Because I know for us, as only His Worship the Mayor with um, Councillor Coombe sending the letter of support and along with the uh, Waiheke local board. So what happens post that? Because, I mean, does it have to come back to us to another letter of support? Or so, Yeah, so please, can I just get that, that process in place? Because I don't want that to happen. If we find out through the report that... Um, it hasn't been replenished um, and we still need more time. I would rather hopefully um, ensure that our support will continue instead of having to formally come back to the, the governing body and then go back to the fisheries and especially in light of the comment that the chair made, which was the minister won't be even looking at it until the end of the year, possibly. Thanks, Councillor. I'll just get Dave to... Um check on that, a bit more technical than me. Thanks. Um, good morning, councillors. Uh, so, yes, the, there is the option for Fisheries New Zealand to um, receive a further extension to a two-year uh, closure, and um, applicants may lodge a new application. Can I just uh, note that um, the council does not need to make a submission on such matters. It's not a requirement for us to do this. It's purely discretionary. There have been other... 186A closures uh, put forward in the past, which the council has been silent on, and, and we might support them in just practice, but we you know, don't choose to put a submission forward. Um, and um, there's an example in Imapuya, which has come up, comes up every you know, couple of years, and that's been run for, th say, four times. There's been a renewal. So um, it's quite normal. Uh, thank you very much. I've got no other questions, so I'll just open it up for comments at this point. Oh, sorry, was that a question, Councillor Watson? Yeah, just a, just yeah, a, Councillor quick, Watson. Just a quick question on the process here. So this goes to the Minister, and the Minister is required to consider the views of representative persons, um, you know, including tangata whenua, environmental, commercial, recreation, and local community interests. So um, I'm just curious to know... Uh, what or how the the minister um, garnishes those 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 views as he goes on the basis of the local board or the council representing the community. We we had reference today to a you know a a, a, a poll that had been done a while, not strictly germane to this proposal. So so do we know how the how the minister comes to that? you know, that adjudication, uh, him or herself, particularly as it goes to community interests. 
So there's a range of submissions that are received. Um, there's a period of um, a month or two until about the 22nd of March for submissions to be received. There's already been 100 submissions received, largely by individuals or community groups. Um, there'll be an analysis by the Fisheries New Zealand staff uh, with mana whenua concerned and actually uh, assessing some of the uh, advice they've received. There'll be some assessment of the science that might be available for um, making an assessment. That may be science that's locally um, derived, or it might be science that is actually more generic in nature, that we kind of know about the biology of certain species. And you know, we know that, for example, in northern waters of the North Island, power don't grow to 125 millimetres length. So therefore, you know, the, the availability of some of these resources are not there. So there'll be some sort of generic assessment by science and from the local Fisheries New Zealand staff, and there'll be some uh, uh, feedback provided to the local, um, to the applicant as to how they will be advancing their advice to the Minister. Uh, thank you very much. If there's no other questions, we'll move to comments. Um, and sorry, I, I do have a question, Councillor Newman. Oh, it's a comment, is it? Um, uh, well, Councillor Newman, I'll let you lead off and then followed by Councillor Coombe. Yeah, look, thank you very much. I, I totally support uh, the proposal. Um, but I just don't, th and and I we, we are constrained by what section 186A of the Fisheries Act states, um, and that is is um, may force a, a rahui closure for a period not exceeding two years. I accept that, but yeah, look, I mean, echoing, I think where Councillor Filipina is going on this. I mean, to me, it seems I feel like this is the stock won't be replenished. Um, unless there is a rahui um, in effect for years and years and years, um, maybe for 10 years, I don't know. It'll be driven by science, but to me, we are constrained by what the Act says, Your Worship, but I just wonder, um, in saying this, whether we need to foreshadow in that correspondence that we need to um, be driven by the science, but acknowledging that it may well be that, um, notwithstanding the, the Fisheries Act, that we're foreshadowing support and principle for a rahui to apply for however long it takes, based on the science, to recover the stock. Because I don't think that you'll achieve much in two years. It's a good start, and noting what the Act says. But I think that we will be back here having another conversation about this matter before long. Um, and I'd like to think that um, the, the, the focus can be on recovery as opposed to trying to work through the process, understanding the, div the divisive nature of that, particularly the longer this goes on. There'll be some people in the community that will really start to resent this, but I think that if you start with a rahui to recover the stock, it is something that needs to be supported for however long it takes. Perhaps if there was a mind that, that we could foreshadow in principle or, or comment in correspondence to that effect as part of our submission. Thank you very much, Councillor Newman. Uh, Councillor Coon. Kia ora. Um, of course, I would very much like to speak strongly in support of this motion. Um, thank you for those who've been able to bring it to us on this agenda. Um, I'd really like to acknowledge the leadership of Ngāti Paua in moving really fast on this rahui. I think it all came together in only a matter of two weeks, um, thanks to the strong support of Piritahi Marae, um, the Waiheke community and the, the local board. So really appreciate Chair Handley joining us today. It was a very moving ceremony when the rahui was placed on the 31st of um, January and we all gathered at the foreshore on Oneuroa and it was an incredible um, outpouring of support with the, the crowds that, that came um, and then were hosted at the marae afterwards. First time I've ever had hungi for breakfast. Um, I just wanted to provide a bit of context as well for this rahui. I'm sure um, colleagues around the table are all really aware of the state of the Gulf report that was released at the beginning of last year it really painted an absolute dire picture of the of the Gulf, where species are um, 
extinct, functionally extinct, like the crayfish. Um, we know that there are, there are issues such as the kinna barrens, which are the areas of rock um, coated with scrawny kinna, where they've been eaten, um, where they've eaten up all of the kelp. Um, and then they go on a rampage because all of their predators, like the crayfish, are no longer around to keep them in check. And we were very privileged in January um, to be able to go out to Hotaru Atoi, um, led by um, at the invitation of Nati Rehua, to go and actually see what the Kinabarans are looking like off, off um, Little Barrier. Um, and then, of course, there's are massive issues in terms of the sediment, we're smothering the mussels on the on the seabed, um, so that that report really did paint a very grim um, picture. So one of course one of the solutions is marine protection. Um, at the moment, it's worth highlighting that only 0.3 percent of the Hauraki Gulf. Um, Tipaka Moana Moana Nui Atoi is actually in marine reserves, and that that percentage really hasn't changed for a long time. It's been extremely difficult to get marine reserves in place, and there's a whole combination of factors about that. But part of it is it's a very rigid tool. It hasn't responded to mana whenua. Um, um, one of Whenua wishes, it doesn't respond to community needs, and it doesn't really recognise all the different stakeholders in the marine environment. Um, so, marine protection has is a really clear goal. The scientists tell us that to make it work, we've got to have at least 30% of the Hauraki Gulf needs to be under marine protection. So this rahui is just one of the tools in which we can go ahead with marine protection. There are other changes that need to happen. We had that fantastic presentation the other day from Sean Lee, who talked to us about the, the dredging. That's something we can be leading on as council. Um, we, can, we do need to see changes to the fishing reg regulations, and we do need the legislation to come in over the top. We do need government. So, this rahui, I think, is really putting out the challenge um, to government that, that action is needed. And I think we're going to see a really domino effect of support across the wider Gulf in terms of more tools being used for marine protection. Um, we do really want the minister to act, and we've heard from Chair Handley that that doesn't seem to even be on the, the radar for this year which is really, really concerning. We've been waiting for government's response to sea change for a long time. Um, and I know as um, in terms of the Hauraki Golf Forum, we're really pushing for that to happen. And I just want to acknowledge too that around the table, I'm, I'm here obviously talking as, as co-chair, as well as councillor for Waitamata and Golf, but also as co-chair of the Hauraki Golf Forum. And I'd just like to acknowledge my colleagues on the forum, councillor Walker, councillor Watson, Councillor Fletcher and Chair Handley, um, we're all on the on the forum, and we put in place the goal of, sorry, and we put in place the 30% um, of uh, marine protection as our goal last year in February. So this is absolutely aligned um, with the commitment we've made as the forum, with what the scientists tell us need to happen in terms of protection. So I really, really strongly. Um, commend to colleagues that we unanimously support the Surahui in terms of our submission. It will send a really strong message to government that the, the community, local government, we're really aligned in terms of this decision. And I also just wanted to make a comment about the broad range of support that there has been for the Surahui. It's been quite incredible to watch the community pages on Waiheke. I was expecting when the notice went out that it was going to happen, that they would just explode with kind of some negativity. But actually, it was incredible, the support that came through. Comments from right across the community, from different sectors, from recreational, commercial, 
um, scuba diving clubs, all saying, you know, good luck even trying to find those species, and this is so long overdue, it's just got to happen, and good on Ngati Pawa for actually leading the way. Um, and what has also been phenomenal, I can't, of course, speak for Mana Whenua, but what we have seen, and it is in the notice from Ngati Pawa, that both trust boards have both supported this. The mana, other Mana Whenua um, over Waiheke, it's not just Ngati Pawa, but um, other Mana Whenua have also supported, and I haven't heard any negativity at all, which is quite incredible um, when we know about iwi politics and we know about um, the controversy that has been around marine reserves in the past. So I really do commend this to everybody, and I really am, um, appreciate the opportunity to speak in support um, and acknowledge Ngāti Pawa's leadership. Um, kia ora, thank you. Uh, kia ora, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Coombe. I think probably everybody's going to say pretty much the same thing, so I'll invite people to speak, but perhaps if there's a point that hasn't been made or if we can make it uh, precisely. Uh, Councillor Shane Henderson. Kia ora, I'll try and be as concise as I can. I was a lawyer back in the day, so... You're not paid by the minute here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I just want to very briefly mihi to Ngāti Pāua for taking such a big step. I uh, want to really support that, um, because that uh, locally we has put their neck on, on the line on a controversial issue, and has said, look, enough's enough, and this is too important, and we've got to take this step. And I really appreciate that um, from the perspective of Waitakere councillor. It reminds me of uh, the Waitakere Rangers, uh, Rahui with uh, Te Kaurua Maki, um, and a lot of bravery and a lot of guts there too. So just want to thank you for that, and thank you for protecting our environment, and I look forward to supporting this. Thank you. Thank you very much, and that was concise. Uh, councillor Mulholland. Uh, thank you, Worship. I will be very quick, given the... Um, comments I'm hearing, although it's my first time speaking today. Um, I would like to give this strong support as well, and I want to thank Chair Handley and all of the board and others that have been involved in this process, and I do know that you'd like to leave soon, so I understand this. Um, I, I just want to comment that on the morning where Councillor Coombe had the um, Hungi, she mentioned. I have a representative, um, Drina Paratini, who is one of our fabulous community members, Māori community members, um, present as well. And um, I know she strongly supports it. So it was great to see one of my um, community members from the FOE there as part of the Mana Whenua group. The reason, Your Worship, I was um, actually asking to speak was I did notice there was a mistake um, where it said 168, but I noticed Megan Tyler came and changed that back to 186, so that's why I did um, originally want to speak. But I do want to give it support, and I do think that we have a duty to serve Tamaki Makoto and um, marine protection for future generations. Coming into this meeting this morning as I was walking um, here, I really thought a lot about the role that we have, and my role is to make sure that future generations are protected and cared for, um, that is our duty whilst we have to make decisions right now for issues we face right now. There's also a, a future that we have to, uh, future generations we have to look after. So, um, and I do hope that um, your worship, you're able to use as much influence as you can with government to take some quick action on this matter. So kia ora and thank you to Councillor Combe for her work too. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Chris Fletcher. Oh, thank you, worship. I, I realise that you want to, um, conclude the meeting as quickly as you can, but I wanted to say that this is so, so long overdue. I went into Parliament when my daughter was four, and one of my objectives that I went in with was to actually see some form of protection for the Hauraki Gulf, for the lack of fish stocks, for the marine degradation, and we had so many well-meaning people that were aspirational and nothing happened. And then we thought that we would get the Hauraki Gulf Marine Park legislation off the ground and the forum would provide some sort of protection. 
nothing happened. The battleground to get things like that when you go down next to Hahe and you have a look at the Marine Reserve there, that was fought and fought and fought. Dennis Marshall was the minister then. And we finally, finally got that through. And now, of course, everybody wants to own it and claim it, and it's fabulous, and, and there is regeneration. But it's going to take decades and decades and decades. So for those who have been at the forefront of actually taking proactive action and not waiting for the government of the day to try and sort of catch up with legislative changes, I say, good on you. I'm ashamed in Auckland, absolutely ashamed of what we have let happen within our entire Hauraki Gulf. Yeah. So I want this to be seen as the sort of cheerleading, wave, <laughs> flag bearing uh, advance on protection. And I think it's, it's shameful if we don't come in behind and give it our fulsome support. Um, and along with the legislative changes that we need, and we talked about a RAFA earlier today, we also need some of those changes coming through on the Hauraki Golf in a governance sense, uh, Hauraki Golf Forum, because it's all very well to be well-meaning, but we've actually got to begin to be effective. And um, I, I applaud it. Well done to everyone concerned. And I'd also like to acknowledge Alex Rogers, who's the executive officer of the Hurricane Golf Forum, who has been a real breath of fresh air and is he's a can do rather than can't do kind of person. So thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Richard Hills. Thank you, Chair. And just want to um, congratulate Nati Power and also um, Kath Handley and all the, the locals and the groups that um, have been involved with this um, and support it. I don't want to repeat what everyone's saying, but I just want to say that this, I think, is a very good step. And as Shane, um, Councillor Henderson mentioned, the Te Kawaro Amake, the, the Rahui in the Waitakere's was a sort of different way of doing things, but we got um, action um, from everyone very quickly. So I think many people, uh, especially mana whenua, are sick of waiting for... for many of the issues that um, are often left up to government processes and years and years of um, um, waiting. So I think this is a good way to push everyone into action. We need to desperately have more protection of the Hauraki Gulf and have, having 0.3% um, protected right now is just uh, pretty pathetic really. So we need to act, government needs to act, uh, mana whenua have acted and Waiheke is telling us that this um, you know, must be in place. As, as Councillor Coomer said before, those species that we're protecting, you'd, you'd be pretty lucky to find any at the moment. So the effect um, on the marine environment there by protecting or hopefully bring back these species, but it's not actually going to negatively affect many people because they can't access that um, right now. So I think uh, if this is a bit of a domino effect, uh, we've got the Hoturu, a similar um, action underway as well. I could see this popping up everywhere, so I hope that um, the government sees this as a bit of impetus to act and realise that probably we're going to have a lot less pushback because these species are just disappearing, if not already gone. So I think it's crucial that we support this. Um, it's, a, it's a collaborative approach, I see it, um, but we need more action from the actual, you know, to make sure we can actually um, have a way to, what's it called, in, you know, infringement you know, we need we need powers to make sure that this can be um, left in place because it's all good to have the rahui, but unfortunately we need to ensure that people who ignore it can be stopped. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Chris Darby. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Look, at the outset, I also acknowledge Dati Poe's leadership here. Uh, but I probably do want to um, dwell on uh, the uh, contributions of uh, Councillor Coomer and Councillor Fletcher. And your very strong words, um, they should resonate for a long time here. Councillor Fletcher, you said you are ashamed. I'm, a, I'm actually disgusted as well. I think we should all be disgusted with the, the, the health of the... or the ill health. It's not health. We can't talk about the health of the Hauraki Gulf. It's the ill health of the Hauraki Gulf. Um, you know, we've all... Three of us have been on the forum at different times and, um, and really struggled with the impotency of, of the forum and, the, the, you know, really making progress. I came off the forum feeling like, well... We, we did achieve a lot, but we, we failed in many areas as well. And uh, now it's under, you know, your, your leadership there, Councillor Kerman, 
all power to you. But, you know, members, we, we took a, a report yesterday in a workshop on this, the, um, um, the State of the Environment report, and you know, one of my questions was about not so much the, the component parts, but about the overall integrity. And if you look at the integrity of the hauraki, uh, it is uh, near on collapsing, if it, if it hasn't really technically already collapsed. Um, and this is really important, but this is such a small part. We have to progress this, and I'm not taking the, the eyes off this good work, but this is such a small part of what needs to be done on the hauraki. You know, in recent days, I've sort of got back to watching a little bit of America's Cup. It's finally tweaked my interest. And l looking at some of this footage and uh, these commentators waxing on about, oh, this glorious Auckland and glorious Hauraki Golf. But it's so skinny on the surface in terms of... Friday. Yep. Yeah, for, thank you. Um, so thin... In, in its understanding of what really is going on in this glorious Hauraki Golf. Um, and in the background in between races, they, they uh, took a shot of somebody uh, hauling in a, an undersized snapper. Now, I'm sure that uh, Fisher put that snapper back, but that in itself, that, that little section, I, I noticed it straight away in the background, this undersized snapper being hauled in. And I, th I fast forwarded a bit and I thought, well, let's see what happens to this America's Cup, whether it stays here, it's retained, or it exits to um, richer people in, in Qatar or wherever, and it's not Team New Zealand anymore. But imagine if we invested $113 million in the Hauraki Gulf um, and we didn't have the America's Cup. You know, I, I'm not... I know that budgets don't work like this, but imagine the energy that we brought to focusing and funding the America's Cup come on the Hauraki Golf. Then, if we ever won future sailing events, we could really be proud about the health of and the beauty of the Hauraki Golf. Because right now, it's a skinny, deep uh, view uh, by those that are here witnessing this event, our city, um, and their understanding of the Hauraki Golf. We've got a long way to go, and that's what I'm stressing. Um, thank you, Councillor Darby and the other councillors who have contributed. Can I just make a very brief contribution myself? Um, <clears throat> I, I absolutely support this uh, because um, the species that we're talking about, uh, the power, the cray, the mussels and the scallops have reached the point of collapse. Actually, can't see why anybody would oppose this Rahui, because there is almost nothing left to take. But it's a sad call on all of us that we have to reach the point of near extinction before we act to protect the sustainability of species. And someone, I think Councillor Newman, made the comment rightly that this is a, a stopgap measure. It is a stopgap measure. It's not what we need longer term. When five of us went across to Hauturu, um, in January, we saw, looking at the University of Auckland Fisheries uh, boat, their under, underground, uh, underwater camera, you saw what was called the Kina Barrens, where there was just nothing left except, you know, the, the, the skinny power, uh, the skinny uh, the Kina, uh, because all of the species that live off the Kina, like crayfish and snapper, were so depleted, they had... Uh, become dominant in the environment, they'd eaten out their own environment, and they'd destroyed the basis uh, for sustainability of any other species. So we have to act on that. At the end of that trip, we wrote to the minister concerned, uh, which is uh, Minister Allen, the Minister of uh, uh, Conservation, and she wrote back saying, you know, because we'd asked for more marine protected areas, 0 0.3, really? 0 0.3 cannot sustain endangered species. And she wrote back saying the current legislation and processes for establishing marine protected areas are, quote, ineffective, inflexible, and no longer fit for purpose. They understand that there is a need for legislation. We need that change of legislation. In the meantime, we should back uh, Ngāti Pāwa, we should back Waiheke uh, Local Board 
in establishing uh, a means to enforce the rahui that's been imposed. And that's why we need the ministerial intervention. It gives the power of enforcement. So uh, I think we'll get wide public support. And thank you, Kath Hanley, for indicating your feedback on what past surveys and what current opinion on the island is. But it is an absolute no-brainer that we support this. Uh, I think we should do it unanimously, but we should go beyond supporting this and say it's time for the provisions of uh, Taitimu Taipari to be actually enacted in a change in legislation, and we'll continue to push for that as well. Right, um, you do have a right of reply, Pippa, if you feel Will you indulge me, Mr Mayor? I'll keep it really brief, I'm, um, because I'm realising that in terms of rounding out the acknowledgements, there's a few that, that have been missed. But I just wanted to thank um, all of the comments that have been made. There's some just absolutely great comments. I'd love to be able to package them all, because they're all such um, um, relevant points. And one of the acknowledgements I did miss was to you, Mr Mayor, um, for you being proactive in terms of corresponding with the Minister. Um, I think this is one tool and we've got to just be pushing on everything because the, um, the dire state of the Gulf really is, is incredibly... Um, the, many people are just really grieving and finding it really tragic. And when the State of the Gulf report came out, um, people were writing to me saying, you know, what can we do? There has to be something. This can't, this can't continue. And I did just have to thank you for the acknowledgement, Chair uh, Councillor Darby, but I just have to really make it clear that I am a co-chair. We have a co-governance arrangement on the Haraki Golf Forum, and that has really brought a new way of operating. And so just to acknowledge my co-chair, um, Nicola McDonald, I'm um, really fortunate that we are able to work in partnership. And just one last acknowledgement to um, Dave Allen, um, I'm going to just do a little bit of nostalgia because I, you might, <laughs> Dave and I used to work at the Ministry of Fisheries together in the 1990s, and I was in the legal team, Dave was in the policy team, and back in the 90s we were trying to make res marine reserves happen, um, and it was just a really thankless task, obviously was not successful, and um, Dave is one of the people who has been holding this space for decades as one of the experts, and we're really fortunate to have him as um, on on council, um, in the council staff, so thank you, Dave, for, for your real commitment, and uh, hopefully you are going to see change in your lifetime that you've been working for for so long. So I just did want to just have that opportunity to um, throw that in. So thank you for the indulgence. And if we could just, if I could also ask that we just have a quick break after this um, so that we can um, just have a pick with Kath, if that's okay. Uh, we'll not only have a quick break, we should be finished in about yes. two minutes. Oh, okay, um, that would be awesome. So the motion, <coughs> the motion is to support the Rahui and the delegation is to myself and Councillor Coombe to write the letter, which will in turn be circulated to you. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. I declare that passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, item number 13 is a summary, is an information only report, um, summary of uh, governing body information memoranda and briefing. Um, can I, uh, Councillor Simpson, to move and seconded? I, Tracy Mulholland, sorry, didn't hear, hear where that came from. Uh, are there any questions? Are there any comments? <laughs> yes, quickly, please, Councillor. <laughs> Um, I, th I think you'll need to address that to the appropriate officers who aren't here at the moment. I oh, actually meet, well, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll ask the appropriate water, officer to talk to you personally, Councillor. No, please use your speaker, Councillor. You know, please, you just that's, talk that, that, That's okay. I think I'm ready to put this motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no carried. The next item, the last item, is consideration of extraordinary business. There is none. So um, I now formally close the meeting and invite councillors to uh, have lunch downstairs. I believe it's ready. Thank you very much.